which unfortunately reads like a litany of fraud, often committed by once sincere inventors that simply can't accept the prospect of failure. One such inventor was Charles Redheffer. Here at the Franklin Institute, we have this wonderful Isaiah Lukens model of Charles Redheffer's perpetual motion machine. And it seems to have worked or didn't work by utilizing these inclines and weights in a very elaborate system of counterbalance. What the people saw was a device that apparently ran under its own power. But a young engineer by the name of Coleman Sellers thought he smelled a rat. Coleman Sellers realized that the larger wheel was actually pushing the power wheel. Uh, and he realized that by looking very closely at the cogs and saw that they were wearing out in the opposite direction. This model clearly shows that the machine was actually driven by a clockwork motor hidden underneath the machine. And that an attendant would actually wind the clockwork motor by pretending that he was dusting it on a regular basis. Charles Redheffer had been charging the enormous sum for the day of five dollars each for people to view his magic machine. So now, in fear of an angry mob, Redheffer hoofed it out of Philadelphia only to try his scam again in New York, this time exchanging the clockwork motor for a servant turning a handle in the room next door. Today, the prize for inventing a free energy system that could power the world is, of course, enormous. Way back in 1946, an inventor by the name of John Searle claimed he had designed a technology that used magnetics to produce unlimited free energy, and that he could use this technology to power a flying machine that could carry 2,000 people from London to New York in under half an hour. It is built very simple. Round here is the actual drive part, which is, by the way, uh, all electric magnetic system. Uh, beneath, you will have eight legs on the actual craft, and combine all, it will take 2,000 passengers. It will be economic to run because there is no fuel bill. Why do you think people don't believe it? I don't know, believe the motor car was coming, or the train, or the aircraft. So why should they believe about this? John Searle persevered in trying to persuade others of his dream, and finally the media did begin to take him seriously. The only person that has ever developed this technology is Professor John Searle. He did this from 1946 through 1978, I think the last one was done, and is capable of redoing it again. This thing wanted to fly. So to me then, the easiest thing was to work on a body. Let it fly. People say, well, you can't do this. You're going to upset the entire world economy. The whole economy is based on oil. We have, uh, and it works, they're saying. Well, it works very well for the people who are running the economy, uh, but not necessarily for everyone else. And particularly not, it seems, for John Searle, who, according to some, was never going to be allowed to let his invention see the light of day. I come from an ex-Secret Service background, where I was in electronic intelligence. John befriended a, um, a quite a well-known figure in the States, uh, a CIA informant. And it's only shortly after that, uh, when John got back to the uh, UK, that things went horribly wrong for him. And they uh, attempted to say that John was um, illegally accessing power from the national grid and imprisoned him for some six months. Uh, two things have to happen. We have to give away free energy technology and we have to give away gravity control technology. That's the only way that that stuff's going to get out because there are so many other interests that want to keep it quiet. And that's why you hear all these spook stories about people and, you know, families are threatened. The per it's not just threatening the person, it's threatening their family and all their friends. And that's what scares the heck out of people. And they say, well, we'll shut up. They'll try to find some legal mechanism of closing you down. If you're an idiot and go and try and patent it, you've given them all the inroads on where you are, how to contact you, etc. So be ultra aware of that. And be careful of getting a bullet in the head. John Searle must be good at dodging bullets because today, age 72, he has managed to keep himself and his dream alive. 
This meeting in London is with Harold Asperden, who has an honours degree in engineering from Cambridge University and is also the retired head of IBM's European Patents Division. Before we pop off, that's life. It ran straight, kept straight all the time, up and down this Dressed in his uniform as Commodore President and Chief Pilot of his new airline, John Searle explains the basics of his free energy technology. What we, we have here is an idea I started with that kept my mind ticking. It would. This is a basic design of the model we want to build, a flying machine. Uh, this is the structure, basic structure idea of how to go about assembling this right. concept. The power unit to drive this machine is basically the same as a domestic power unit that we want to develop, drive cars, but it, the engine is a bit more complicated. But that power unit is basic in itself? Yes, basic. It, it applies to anything. And any it, can it can run, give more power than the power you're putting in, is oh, that right? Yes. yes. When I first heard of this, I realized that you had something new that was different from anything before, in that you have those magnets interacting with one main central magnet yes. unit. The thing I see in it is that the magnets rotate, and if they can cause the ether to rotate as yeah. well, the resulting rotation is in the same direction as the, as the magnet, it therefore will accelerate. The government knows about this work. Nobody's hit them hard about this work. The government, the government only know what their advisors tell them. Yeah. Their advisors get money from the government, yeah. and they want to keep getting the grants. So yeah. they're not getting the advice they should get on matters like this. Anyone inventing this would be wealthy beyond belief and would instantly earn themselves a place in history. And that is why I believe that so many people persist in chasing this impossible dream. So is John Searle simply one of Eric Krieg's deluded inventors who cannot give up on an unworkable idea? The big money from, from the Americans yes. in particular is essential. Clearly, Harold Aspiden doesn't think so, and yet it has taken John Searle over 50 years to get someone with Aspiden's qualifications to take him seriously. It started on its own. Was this also to be the fate of people like Aldo Costa and other free energy inventors? Is it art? Yeah, of course it's art. If this isn't art, what is art? I worked at the Los Alamos National Laboratory for 34 years exploring energy production from conventional nuclear sources. And as you know, Los Alamos National Laboratory developed the first atomic bomb that was used on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan. New ideas frequently come from outside of conventional science. I mean, I myself, uh, being a conventional scientist, look at things objectively look at things in terms of the rules and it's more difficult to think outside of that. Uh, the people who do that generally are people who are very unusual. On Keelinet we get roughly 600 hits a day and we get a lot of emails from people all around the world that a lot of, a lot of ideas, a lot of claims. There is something uh, uniquely beautiful about the, the idea of perpetual motion and the people who pursue it, and uh, some of the ideas that Keelinet has been promoting for years uh, as a central clearinghouse for something like 15 years now. Uh, we study perpetual motion, alternative science, and uh, different aspects of what's called unorthodox science. Okay, put this here. Doug Comson is an alternative and some would say unorthodox here. scientist. Doug designs over unity motors, that is, motors that put out more energy than it takes to run them, producing a perpetual flow of free energy. Let's see. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. Here. Ah. What we have here is a motor that can run continuously forever because 